Welcome to this video from In 28 Minutes. Thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms, Udemy, Safari and Pact. Let's welcome our lead instructor, Rangarao Karanam. Welcome back. One of the frequent questions that's asked is how is microservices architectures different from service oriented architectures? Right? It's a great question because whenever we talk about service oriented architectures, what are we talking about? Services. All right. That's exactly what we talk about when we talk about microservices too. We talk about microservices. So we say small services. However, whenever we talk about service oriented architecture, it's also creating independent services and independent services are small, right? So that's a great question to ask when you say, what is the difference between a microservices architecture and a SOA architecture, all right? So let's look at the key differences right now. Whenever we talk about microservices architecture, we not only focus on small services, but we also focus on independently deployable components. We would want to be able to release microservice one without changing any of the other stuff, should be able to take it to production very, very quickly. So that's one factor where microservices is very different from SOA. In SOA, the focus is on creating independent services, but not on being able to deploy them independently. So you would have large applications which are built around services, but if you have to take them live, then you have to take the entire application live. So that's one key difference. With microservices, you have smaller deployable components. One of the other important things with the SOA architecture was after a little bit of time, SOA architecture resulted in having large enterprise buses. Whenever you needed to implement something, you needed to make a change in your application as well as you need to make a change on the enterprise bus. The enterprise service bus became one of the central spokes where a lot of business logic went into it. Over a period of time, these attracted up all the business logic of the applications and they became really, really difficult to maintain. In the microservices architectures, the focus is on avoiding something like this. That's why we use the terminology thin pipes. Basically, the infrastructure that you'd use to connect applications should be as thin as possible, should not have any business logic at all. All the business logic should be inside the real applications and not inside the connecting pipe. That's another key difference between microservices and SOA architectures. Now, let's look at a few more differences. As we discussed earlier, big vendors hijacked SOA in a way to create products like enterprise service bus, like there are a huge number of enterprise service buses and a lot of logic went into the enterprise service buses. The other thing is, SOA was really tied to XML, right? So at that point, SOAP was very famous. So SOA was really tied to the XML, to the formalities around it, to the complexities around it. SOA also focused on having centralized governance. So you had kind of an architecture team which governed what went into the enterprise service bus, what it can do, what it cannot do, what can be done in a specific application and so on and so forth. And microservices architecture typically focuses on decentralized governance. It's a governance system where you have a team of people, like including the developers meeting and making decisions based on inputs from the development team as well. As we discussed earlier, SOA did not really focus on independent deployability of the applications. It was just focused on building independent services, but not worried about the deployability of them. We also talked about the fact that SOA resulted in complex ESBs, which became the central point for attracting business logic. And the pipe, I mean, ESB is basically like a pipe, right? So the pipe became very, very smart. And with microservices, we try and have dumb pipes, but smart endpoints. Let's look at a sample example. Let's say there's a sales app where you're requesting a customer to fill in what are the stuff he would want. He might want a saving account, he might want a debit card, a credit card and things like that, right? So in a single order, you can have one of more of these to be created. So in a SOA architecture, the way we would implement it is the sales app would put the order and the ESB would have the logic. It would have all the logic to decide 
how to create a savings account, how to create a debit card and the credit card as well. So it will look at the order, try and look at the request which is coming in and create appropriate request to the savings account and the debit card and the credit card systems. However, in the microservices architectures, the way I would implement that is by creating an event. So the sales app would create an event called a new order event. And each of these systems would be listening on to all the events and each of these systems would look at the event and see if it's interesting to it and if it's interesting to it it would pick it up and process it so the logic is moving away from the esb it's no longer inside the centralized hub it's no longer inside the pipe each of these microservices would be intelligent to understand if they need to process the order or not so the architecture is more a uh, event driven architecture in 28 minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300000 learners across platforms like udemy safari online and pact we have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months the question is what do you want to learn next we are building solutions to help programmers at all levels you can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python, and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular, and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design, and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.